want to be great. And we had to do the whole field of up down. End of the day, you know, we are on the same team. You know, I think we're one team, one unit, one heartbeat. As guys finished at the end, there was a lot of encouragement going on. You got four left. Let's go, baby. Come on. Keep fighting. Only strong surviving. Yeah, let's go, boy. Game, game finish last, that's when we're done as a team. And nobody else would ever leave one of our teammates down. I left flat 31, got on the long, on the long, ready. <laughs> the sky's the limit, baby. Respect on three. One, two, three. Right. Let's go. Whoa. You got it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Get out of bed, baby. baby. Two good plays. Don't get it done. You got to finish. It started off three or four summers ago. I want to say three. I'm not even sure what, what year that was. But I was, work, I was working at a, this daycare, and I already made plans to transfer from my old school. And it was a situation where the daycare, we had to sign a contract saying that if we leave any time during the summer, we won't receive the full compensation for our time being. And lo and behold, a week before the camp ends, coach calls me and says, we have a position open for you. If you're interested, you still come. And so I run to my father, and he was like, hey, you better j j hop on the bus and go to, <laughs> go to Maryland as is. And I was like, Dad, but I'm going to miss out on all this money. He was like, well, you better go to school. You better go to Maryland and take care of that, take care of that opportunity. Otherwise, you'll never get out another opportunity like this. I hopped on the bus from Long Island, New York, straight down to D.C. The trip down from New York to D.C. was long, and, and I wasn't sure if I made the right choice. But about halfway there, I was sure that this is where I need to be, this is what I want to do, and the changes in my life were about to come as long as I made this trip. I got dropped off in Chinatown. This is the spot they dropped me off, and I remember thinking, I was really scared, I was really, I don't know anybody out here, and my cell phone is broken, I don't know how I'm gonna get around. Didn't know which way was College Park from anything. I called a cab, and the cab picked me up, and I was like, uh, just send me to College Park, Maryland. <laughs> and he was like, are you going to the University of Maryland? I was like, yeah, that's where I'm going, that's where I'm going. I was just sitting looking at all the, uh, all the sights and everything. I remember coming this way and, and I, was still, I was still shaking in my boots. And I was like, oh man, if these guys don't like me, they're not gonna give me a place to live. I'm gonna be sleeping out on the street. And the more, the more I traveled, got closer to the college park, the less I felt nervous, the more I felt ready. I showed up with a book bag and a pillow. <laughs> I showed up with a book, like four days worth of clothes and a pillow. And I was like, how you doing coach? I'm, I'm Bemi, you called me earlier. He was like, I know who you are. And he was like, well, today, tonight's the last night they're gonna sleep in the dorms. So you're welcome to stay in the dorms if you want. And I was like, that's cool with me. <laughs> I, I sleep in the dorms. And so he introduced me to Dean Matadi. That was the first time, that was the first football player. That was the first person, student, football player, anybody that I met on the Maryland campus. 
I remember when I first met Bimmy. It's pretty funny because in comes this guy about 5'10 best. And uh, anyways, he's got like a couple of trash bags in his hand or something. And when I seen Dean, I was like, oh man, this guy's big. He was really intimidated, he said. He said, uh, you know, I'm 6'4", 300. You know, I thought it was kind of funny because I'm by no means the biggest guy on the team here at all. You know, so I was like, man, this guy's really in for it. And so I'm looking at Dean like, dang, these guys are big and he's on the D line. And I was like, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to walk on and accomplish anything. Yeah, I guess that was his first impression. I know he's a lot, uh, he was really nervous. And like everybody was playing video games in the hallway and stuff like that. And I wanted to go out and be like, hi, I'm Bemi. But I was intimidated. I remember right across the hallway, I think it was Dane and Edwin playing some video game. And I really wanted so badly to go over there and just introduce myself. But I just kept to the room. I grabbed my pillow. Uh, Dean gave me an extra sheet. And I just, I just lied in the bed and I was like, here's the start of a new beginning. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny because I had just gotten here like two weeks before he did, three weeks before he did. So uh, it's not like I knew the ropes myself yet. Here we are at Christopher Newport University, Newport News, Virginia. Spent two years here playing Division Three ball for the captains. For our home games at Christopher Newport, we would start out in the locker room and march as a team in lines of two coming across this field, come out. We meet up about here, get our breakdown, start going hype, and then run through the cheerleaders, and the spirit club, and go nuts with the fans. When I made the decision to leave Christopher Newport to come to the University of Maryland, I really gave up a lot. I was on a full academic scholarship there, didn't pay a dime for school. I was one of the captains on the team. I had it all going for me at CNU. You know, it's a small school, 5,000 people. You know, everybody in the school, you're like a king there. Uh, it, it was just awesome. It was extremely difficult to leave, but you know, the, the one thing that really deterred me from staying was the fact that, you know, it was Division Three football. It was just that desire to play big time football. I never got the chance to do it. I never felt like I was tested. I wanted to see what I'd do against the best. And uh, that's ultimately what drove me to leave CNU and everything I had going for me to, to throw it all away and start over at the University of Maryland. He turned all that down. He, he put, put all his money on black and just said, let's, let's go. I'm going to Maryland. There's a couple reasons why I picked Maryland. Uh, you know, it's real funny. When it came down to it, it came down to the University of Virginia and it came down to the University of Maryland. You know, I played uh, high school at T.C. Williams High School. If you're a great football player and you're from D.C., Maryland, or Virginia, you go to the University of Maryland if you're in that metro area. It's just, you know, how it works. You know, that's the hometown school. Like, they pay to do this. You know, for scholarship guys, we're on scholarship and we still have doubts about doing this. So I can't imagine what, you know, it'd be like with the financial costs on top of that, with the opportunity costs. They really did give up a lot, and you just want to see the, the best for both of them, and you really want both of them to, you know, get on scholarship. They're living their dream. Um, I mean, that's what America is based on. Uh, you know, I don't want to get uh, uh, into cliches and things of that nature, but, I mean, that's what we're all about, and, and they're living their dream. I mean, those guys are very, very confident uh, young men, and, and they knew that they could play at the very best level of college football. Me and Dean relied on each other a lot. We would just talk to each other, be, be each other's support system, and be like, well, we made it this far. There's no point in turning back or saying, I wish I would have stayed at so-and-so school. We really picked each other up. You know, we were each other's biggest support system. It's like my best friend now. We, we're roommates right now. We hang out all the time. But yeah, we pretty much hit it off right from the start. You got good separation 